everyone, my name is Udit. This video has the top 5 tips that a senior engineering manager from Google has for candidates interviewing for people's leadership roles in tech. So this is relevant for you if you're interviewing for an EM role at Google, Amazon, Microsoft, Uber, Twitter, Apple, the list is endless. Quick introduction, I am from Prefly. We help you with your interview preparation so that you can get the job that you're looking for. On our website, you can find tooling for resume reviews, interview guides and question banks, which can kind of help you navigate through your interview prep strategy. Uh, we've also got free mock interviews with other candidates. And if you want advice or interview practice with a coach from your target role and company, we've also got that on our website. Good then, to the tips. Tip number one, we'll start with the obvious one, structure. It's really important to structure your answer. And generally speaking, the star and SBI formats are the ones to go to for any kind of behavioral or situational question. STAR stands for Situation, Task, Action and Result. SBI stands for Situation, Behavior and Impact. And there are three reasons why having this sort of structure is important. Reason number one, your interviewer now knows where you're going with your answer. So they're kind of reassured that you're actually answering the question they asked. Reason number two, this structure forces your answer into kind of a story-like narrative which flows well. It replicates the flow of events as they happened, which makes it both relatable and believable. Third reason, you don't end up missing key points, like for instance, the context behind a certain action or task that you ended up executing against. Tip number two then, structure the options within your answer. Now this is a bit of a next level tip. When you're presenting your answer, you'll usually be presenting an array of options that you considered, chose between after evaluating trade-offs, finally went with and derived learnings from, right? And it's really, really easy to fall into the trap of just answering that question through, hey, here's what I did, full stop. And that's not a terrible answer. It's just not a really good answer and doesn't make you stand out because you want to show that you were deliberate about a certain decision and that you considered all the possibilities before you deep dive into one. So the general format that this senior EM had as a recommendation is to know is to follow what's known as a T-style approach, where you start with a bit of breadth and give a high-level overview of all the options you considered, and then deep dive into one and the pros and cons you evaluated and the trade-offs that you made before you finally went with that particular decision. Why this recommendation? Three reasons again. First reason, again, quick overviews are a really great way for your interviewer to get an idea of what the decision landscape looked like. Second, if you just deep dive directly into an answer, you're actually not doing justice to the work you really did in that you're not sharing the big picture, you're not sharing the full range of the complexity that you went through and you're basically just talking about what you did rather than what you could have done, which shows the level of maturity that you need to demonstrate in an EM role. Third, if your interviewer for some reason decides that one of the other options is what they'd really like to deep dive instead, it gives them the room to do so. Tip number three is complexity. So the senior EM felt that you should pick literally your most complex project and share that. And this is a little bit of a counterintuitive tip because essentially complex projects are a lot, lot harder to share about than simple projects or intuitive ones. The reality though is that they help you stand out. Pretty much every single EM, for instance, has faced a situation where they had an underperforming uh, team member that they had to work with and help resolve. Every EM likely has a situation where they had to communicate, not create news to a team member. So if you default to these answers when asked, tell me about a time when you had to deal with a complex situation or tell me about a time when you struggled with something, you're falling back on the simplest possible answer that you can give. And you're not really standing out from all the other EMs who are also be going to be falling back on similar answers like this. So try to think back to a situation that was either unique in terms of scope or unique in terms of complexity or that helps you uh, be remembered after the interview against all the other candidates who are also going to be interviewed for that role. Tip number four then, always try to tie your answers into how you would deal with the situation were it to again in the future, even if you're not explicitly prompted for this. Why? Because an interview is not really a truth test. Your interviewer isn't just trying to understand, did you do it or not? And are you making up stories or not? They're trying to understand, do you have the level of maturity and experience to be able to incorporate learnings from what you've done in order to be able to apply it to the situations that you will absolutely inevitably face in the future? So what they're trying to assess is, did you have that depth of experience to extract these learnings and learn from potentially mistakes you made because you might well have made mistakes. Most people do uh, realistically. They're trying to assess, do you have that level of experience to distinguish the nuances between uh, different situations that you might have faced in the past in order to be able to customize your approach to deal with them in the future? The fifth and final tip the senior EM had was prepare 
and practice. So when it comes to preparation, prepare the mechanisms you want to talk about, prepare your stories, prepare your key examples, prepare the keywords that you want to push through, uh, document these and then practice. Practice them out to yourself, practice them out to friends and ask very actively, uh, what is the message you took away from this story? And then introspect, is that matching with what you wanted to communicate in that particular answer? Practice with peers, Prefully offers this, a host of other websites offer it. Uh, you're going to be practicing with talented other engineering managers, all of you are capable of interviewing each other, all of you have likely interviewed other candidates before so you know what you're looking for. There's nothing like putting yourself under a little artificial simulated pressure to see if you can actually deliver stories with that level of conciseness that an interview absolutely demands. And then finally, when you're ready, practice with professionals. Professionals who are actually going to level you, who are going to filter the best from the good and those who are finally going to make a judgment call on whether you get an offer or not. And once again, Prefully offers these. So go ahead, take advantage of this and give yourself the edge that you need. That's all from us at Prefully and the senior Google EM. So a massive thanks to them for contributing this content. They were actually writing this out in the written feedback for a candidate and were like, hey, let's distribute this wider to the larger community. And that's why we put together this video. We really hoped you liked it and found it useful. If you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe and good luck with your upcoming engineering manager interview. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, please subscribe. Our website is prepfully.com. We've got lots of interview questions there. You can also schedule a mock interview with one of our experts. You can find the link in the description below. All the best from us at Prepfully, and we hope you totally rock your interview.